and the dartboard comes into its own for those with a steady eye. We've even got a tame fisherman on board, but so far he's caught nothing but chills. Another, more useful sport is hunt the soap. For this you need a large bucket and a pile of dirty linen which you proceed to wash in public. Every now and then, even in mid-Atlantic, the sun shines and there's a calm sea. Then repainting is the order of the day, repairing the ravages of wind and weather. We carry two large lifeboats for air-sea rescue work and every few days we have drills in which everyone takes part. Then once a week we test our rescue dinghies. A short row in the North Atlantic is good fun, weather permitting. But the next day probably brings a fury of sleet and a howling gale. this, we are more than usually alert for distress calls from ships or aircraft. Weather ships have already saved a number of lives at sea. One of our jobs is to help transatlantic aircraft as much as possible. There are radio beacons fitted in all weather ships on which aircraft can fix their position. Only the other day an aircraft on its way to Prestwick asked for wind speeds at 10,000 feet said he hadn't much fuel and wanted a tailwind to help him along. The senior Met officer worked out the wind speed from the latest observations made by the ship and phoned it through to the radio office. Our radio officer passed the message on to the aircraft operator by radio telephone. Some time later, though, we received a forecast of landing conditions at Prestwick, which looked pretty bad. A violent electrical storm made radio conditions very difficult, and we wondered if the aircraft had picked it up. The captain came down to the Met plotting office and looked at the chart. We decided to call the aircraft again and make sure that the pilot had received the Prestwick report. We tried to get in touch with the aircraft, but there was no reply. Time was passing, and every second made the position more dangerous. We called him continually by radio telephone and Morse. Still no reply. Jock, in the radio room, heard a faint signal of acknowledgement. He passed the report and the aircraft turned away to a clear field and safety.
Just a small incident that shows one of the useful jobs often done by weather ships. So the time went by.